So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 27. In how many distinguishable ways can the seven letters in the word minimum be arranged if all the letters are used each time? So basically, if we want to know how many ways we could arrange this, we just we need to take into account the fact that there are repeat letters. But in general, let's take an easier example first, because I just want to review why this works the way it works. So like, suppose I had cat, and I want to know how many ways you could arrange the three letters in cat. The way that would be done would be three factorial, which is a special case of a permutation where you take all of the objects in the set. So another way to do that is 3p3. And I won't go into all the permutations and the formula behind that and everything, but um, so just kind of hold off on that for a moment. But 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And we can validate that, right? This is one way of arranging the three letters. You could also go CTA, you could go ACT, ATC, or you could start with T and go TAC or TCA. So those are all six, those are all the possible ways to arrange those three letters. This works even if you have more. So if you had a four letter word like time, you could do four factorial and you'll get 24 and there truly are 24 ways to arrange. We have a seven letter word. So what we want to do is probably seven factorial, but the problem with that is the repeat letters. So suppose you take the way the letters in the word minimum are arranged right now you could switch this M and this M and you'd have the same outcome. So technically, we're over counting. There aren't really seven fact seven factorial, if you put that in your calculator and get that number, it's too big. There really aren't that many ways because some of the ways you could switch the letters and you'd still have the same thing. So I ho hope that makes sense that we're over counting by doing that. What we have to do to correct for that over counting is identify the way the number of ways in which we could arrange the repeat letters so what are the repeat letters um, M is repeated three times and I is repeated twice N and U are only there once so we don't have to do anything to account for those so given that you've already laid the seven letters out in a particular way it could be this particular way or any other way my question is how many ways could you arrange the M's? There's three M's and three slots that those M's sit in. We could scramble those M's around any way we want. How many ways are there to do that? Three factorial. So we'll divide by three factorial to account for those multiple ways in which the M's could be positioned. And for the I's, we'll divide by two factorial because there's two I's and two positions that those I's sit in. In other words, if we were to make them unique, right, if we were to call them I1 and I2, you could switch them, and you'd still get the same outcome. So by counting it twice, you're overstating the number of answers. So in general, this is how you do permutations where you have to account for repeat letters. And as far as actually solving that, that's 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which you don't have to write because multiplication by 1 is just itself. 3 times 2 times 2. So 2 and 2 is 4. 3 cancels with 3. 7 and 6 is 42. 5 and 2 is 10. 420, best choice is C. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.